call yourself a free spirit, a wild thing, and you're terrified somebody's going to stick you in a cage. Maybe you're already in that cage and build it yourself. So I was perusing the tube the other day as one does. And I came across a video by a creator that I love dearly. Truly think he's one of the best this platform has to offer and I decided that I was going to steal his idea. <laughs> so Damon Dominique made a video the other day titled Cleaning Out My Literal and Metaphorical Closets to Songs I Loved in High School. And I thought that was a great idea, mainly because I also have to clean out my closet. You're probably wondering, what do you have in your hand? Well, if you don't know what this game is, then you live under a fucking rock. This game is called We're Not Really Strangers. In Damon's video, he played a similar card game from the School of Life, where it's basically just like a, a game full of questions. Now I don't have that same game that he played, but I do have this one. So the first step of this journey is gonna be going through the shit that I've already had underneath my bed. Oh God fucking fuck my And taking out anything that I'm gonna wanna wear in the winter and if I don't want to wear any of this in the winter, then probably getting rid of it. Because you shouldn't own clothes that just sit under your bed all year long. You don't wear them. You should get rid of them. Have you ever told someone I love you but didn't mean it? If so, why? The answer to this is simple, you know? Um, it is no. <laughs> I'm someone who like, I will not call you my best friend if you're not one of my best friends. I don't like call everyone a friend of mine. If I know you and we're not super close, I call you an acquaintance. <laughs> like I won't overdress the way that I feel because I do feel that way, that like strong love for so many people that I don't really feel the need to like say that about people that I don't feel that way about. I've already got so many people that I need to be spending my time with and showing my love to. So like, I'm just gonna give it to those people rather than like saying random shit about others. Is this annoying? or does it make me look godly? Already come across two pairs of pants in this journey um, that I kept when I was moving because there were two pairs of pants that I loved, but I have since grown out of them. I have these pants that are white in the front, black in the back. I fucking love these, but I wore these when I was like a size 10. I kept these because I do love them and I didn't want to get rid of them because I was like, well, what if I lose weight and then I can wear them again and like they're so cool but I just feel like since then even in the last couple months I've changed a lot how I see my body and in my body image journey which is wild again yeah these are a size 10 couldn't be me even in the last three months I feel like I've gotten rid of the idea inside my brain that's like thinness is just around the corner and like I'm gonna my body's gonna look different and that's gonna be like mm. I don't want to live like that anymore it just it's not healthy for me. There's also no point to it. Cause like I could just go out and find pants that look like these that are in my current size rather than being like, you can't wear cool clothes until you're this size again. Like who does that help? No one. I feel like that might even be shocking to hear me say that I thought that way about myself up until very recently, but the process of accepting your body, there's like so many different levels to it. And I feel like I got good at accepting my body on a day-to-day -day level first, which I feel like is common but then accepting your body on like a future trajectory level is difficult, I feel like, because you can work towards accepting your body on a day-to-day -day level, but then there's a voice inside your head that's like, this is just your day-to-day, -day, and at some point your body's gonna look different, and maybe you'll be the size you were when you were 17 again, but it's like, I'm, I can't live like that. I can't live constantly like hanging on to the future. The future holds some like superior body that I don't currently have, when it's like, I just wanna stop placing like one body type above the other and like I've accepted my body on a daily basis. I've learned to love this body on a daily basis and like this is my best body. I look fucking hot. This is your PSA to get rid of the shit that you've been hanging on to, to cater to your future body, whatever you've been hanging on to. Your body right now is your future body. It's your best body. Love this body. Stop planning for a body that doesn't exist. What are you more afraid of? Failure or success and why? This feels like an easy question because I have never been afraid of failure because I know that it's not in the cards for me. I feel like I've been more afraid of success in the way that I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I won't like it as much as I think that I'm going to or I'm afraid that I'll get bored quickly. If I become successful too quickly that 
I won't feel satisfied later on in life. If success doesn't come at the right time, that I might become worse because of it. Like, I don't wanna be super successful at the age that I am now. I would rather be somewhere in the middle. Like, I have a lot of daily successes and a lot of small successes, but there's still so much more growth that I wanna have in like my career and in my personal life and everything. Like, I feel like it would be so shit if I was at the top of my game right fucking now. If I become super successful in like five years or even in 10 years or even 20 years, will I still feel then that it was too early? And I don't know, I just want my life to keep getting better. And sometimes I worry that if you become so successful and you reach a certain height, it's like nothing will ever satisfy you like that again. But I've never been afraid of failure because that's not happening. Do you think the image you have of yourself matches the image people see you as? There have been moments in my life where I felt like so seen by people and so like just so understood and there are certain people that I routinely feel seen by like my best friend Ashley. She is someone who I have always felt seen and understood by in every conversation that we've ever had every year of our friendship she is someone who i feel like understands me a hundred percent and loves that person unapologetically and like sees me the same way i see myself that feels really good to have someone that you you know is like on the same page as you and i think that most of the time people see me the same way that i see myself because I'm on the internet. If you watch my YouTube videos, you're watching me when I'm by myself. You're watching the person I am when I'm completely alone, which feels like the most authentic version of myself. Like, I always find it so weird when people are like, people do like characters on YouTube and stuff, like it's not real. Cause I feel literally the exact opposite. <laughs> the most authentic version of myself is the person that you see on my YouTube channel. Obviously it's not all of me because I'm so certain of myself and who I am and who I'm not. I think that like other people don't really have a hard time figuring me out. But I also think that I am misunderstood sometimes. I don't think that's necessarily a fault of my own though and more just like a conflicting personality thing. Like if someone misunderstands me, I don't really think that it's because of me necessarily. I think it's probably just because our personalities aren't compatible with each other. So of course they see me in, you know, a different light or whatever. Does that make sense? I feel like I've been filming so many more videos without makeup on recently. It's probably largely in part because I work for an acne skincare company now. So I feel like I'm just like thinking and talking about acne and creating content about acne all the time for work. So now like in my personal life, I'm like, do I need to? I think I'm okay. Even before filming this video in my brain, I was like, should I put on makeup? But it's like, why? Because I'm gonna film this video and then sit in my bed for the rest of the day. So like, next up we got the closet. And ignore the mess on the bottom. There's really not a mess on the bottom. It's just that I have a cat carrier in there right now and I don't feel like using a ladder to put it all the way up top because I feel like I'm gonna be using it in the next couple days. <laughs> Time to retire my David Dobrik sweatshirt. Like I really just don't wear this anymore. I don't really want to get rid of it though because I do like it. I go through phases with my sweatshirts where I will only wear hoodies and then I'll go through phases where I like only wear crewnecks. Right now I'm totally in a crew neck phase and I just refuse to wear any of my hoodies. Condolences to David Dobrik. <coughs> crew neck, but I also haven't worn this in a while. It's a Kentucky sweatshirt because my brother goes to the University of Kentucky. Otherwise, I don't know, I would have no reason to wear a Kentucky sweatshirt. I really thought that my head was gonna fit through this. I really thought, you really just watched my brain think that it was gonna fit through here is if I don't have fucking mega mind. You know what? No, don't even try because it's gonna get stuck and then you're gonna be like a little kid with its fucking head stuck through the banister. And that's not a conversation that I wanna have with the fire department. Not today, not at the ripe age of 23, baby. What are you still trying to prove to yourself? I feel like there's definitely a part of me that's still trying to prove that this self-love thing, this like feeling good in my body thing is a long-term thing and not like I'm 23 and having a fun time thing. <laughs> I feel like I say this all the time. Like I'm in a good place. 
I'm in a place that's way better than where I used to be. But there has to be another level. There has to be more to this. Or not even a better place necessarily, but a more stable place, like long term. Because it's like, I feel really good right now. I've felt really good for the last couple months, but like, is this gonna last? Like, I don't know, progress is never linear, but I think that I'm still trying to prove to myself that the work that I'm doing now is gonna have long-term effects on me. What's your father's name? And tell me one thing about him. My dad's name is Torin. I feel like my entire life, I grew up a daddy's girl. I am my father's biggest fan. <laughs> I love that man. I'm super close with my dad. He is super successful and motivated and passionate about what he does the same way that I am and is like super driven and it, like the best person to talk to about career stuff and he always gives me the best advice and he's also like so supportive of everything that I've ever done ever in my life. <laughs> Anytime that I do something that I'm successful in or I'm becoming sort of successful in like step one is be successful, step two is call dad. <laughs> like I just like want to make him proud of me and I feel like he is proud of me. I know that he's proud of me, he tells me all the time. Growing up with a dad like him it like he's given me such high standards for like how men should act and be because he is just like a wonderful person what's your mother's name and the most beautiful thing about her my mom's name is Anne and Michelle to be exact without a doubt the best part about my mom is that she was born to be a mother I think that she is above all else a really good mom if you know my family you know that like my parents would both like live, breathe, die, do fucking anything for us, as parents should. Like your parents should do that for you. <laughs> Being the oldest, I got to watch the way that my mom was a mom to my siblings as well. And I think it made me understand her more because of it. When you're younger, you're just like a bratty fucking teen. It, like my mom could have done anything and anything and would have been like, bitch. Which I really, like, I didn't really go through an intense phase like that because I've never been like a rebellious kid. But you know, when you're a teen, you're like, oh, fuck this, fuck that. And then you look back on it now as an adult, or in my case, getting to watch your mom be a mom to your siblings, all of a sudden you're like, oh, all the things that I looked at when I was younger and was like, oh, this is so fucking annoying. I look at now and I'm like, oh, you were just being like a mom. And a really good one at that and like maybe some like advice she gave me when i was younger where at the time i'd be like oh that's so annoying like shut up but then now i look back on it and i'm like no she was right and i'm glad i listened to her even though i disagreed with her at the time or thought that it was annoying like always cared and still do care very deeply about like what my parents think getting to watch my mom be a mother to my siblings and like really seeing and understanding it because i feel that same sort of like protectiveness towards my siblings and like I also want the best for them so like seeing my mom be a mom to my siblings and feeling the same way that she did I like understood anything that she had ever said to me or maybe as a teen I didn't agree with it anyways my mom's just a badass so officially successfully swapped out summer closet for fall closet but now I have all this other shit that needs to either go under my bed or into the one drawer that I just emptied. What is a compliment you wish you received more frequently? This is easy. I know exactly what it is. <laughs> it might seem so simple because I feel like people who get told that they are this feel like it's so like oversaid, but I feel like I'm never told this. Not never, but just that it's not the first thing people say about me. I wish that people said that I was loving more or kind. I don't know, like obviously people compliment me a lot on like how passionate I am, how fiery I am, that I'm, you know, I'm shameless, that I'm so confident, like all these things that are like very like, ugh, like, <laughs> I don't know, like power compliments. Sometimes wish that people would notice the softer side of me. Gotta make some noise here. I like start talking and then I stop doing what I intend to be doing in this video, which is cleaning my fucking closet. <laughs> What is my biggest weakness? This is something that all of you know about me and <laughs> you are all going to agree with me on this one. <laughs> I am um, at times overly ambitious. <laughs> I have all these grand plans of things I would like to create and um, the life I would like to live and I'm just like, well, fuck it, let's live now. 
let's sleep six hours a day and do everything that we want to do. And then I can't do it because I'm like, no, you have to like take care of yourself. What are you doing? Pitch all these beautiful, wonderful ideas. Truly beautiful and wonderful, but um, that are just like so ambitious. But I'm like, I need to do it now before anyone else does. <laughs> um, when sometimes I just need to be like, okay, it's a marathon, I'm not a sprint baby girl. Like we can relax. Starting a podcast in the middle of all of this while I have a full-time job and can barely upload YouTube videos on a consistent schedule. Really, that was one of the more ambitious things that I've taken on in my life. <laughs> what is a dream that you've let go of? I feel like I'm gonna answer this in a different way because this isn't a dream that I've let go of necessarily, but I think that I've become clearer on what my real dream or biggest dream in relation to this is. My camera's gonna fucking die. Great. When I started getting into like videos, I, I mean, obviously fell in love with YouTube. I love internet content. I love social media content. I love the format. I think it's brilliant. I think social media is the future. When I got to college, I think that I started to feel like that wasn't cool or that that wasn't what I should be wanting for myself. Like, I don't know, you go to college for video and then all of a sudden everyone around you has like seen every single movie in the whole world and can tell you everything about every director that has ever existed. And I'm like, I can tell you everything about every single fucking YouTuber that has ever existed. <laughs> I haven't seen all of the great movies that maybe someone who went to school for what I went to school for should have seen by now, but it's like, I don't care that much. I just think that a lot of it is just like to say that you know things and a lot of the time it's like just useless fucking knowledge. I think the more time that I spent in college and the more that I spent being like, oh yeah, I want to be like an award winning director someday, which I would like to do, but that's not like my big dream and it feels like misguided to be like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do just because it appears more sophisticated or like bigger. Really what I want to do is like make fucking internet content. I love making YouTube videos. I work for a brand making video content on social. I love doing that. I love working with people on social media. It died. But all of that to say, I don't feel like I want to or need to be living the PA life up at fucking 3 a.m. to try to like get myself into that industry when that's not even really what excites me. What I love is directing, producing, editing, like being involved full force. I can do that and feel fulfilled doing that through YouTube right now. I don't have to wait. I don't have to like be a PA and spend like fucking 10 years being somebody's bitch on set. I can do what I love doing and feel fulfilled in that right now. Like success to me doesn't look like working in Hollywood and being on movie sets like that's not I don't care that's not what like matters to me in my life what matters to me is that I get to put my talents to good use today and every day and feel fulfilled doing that I just don't feel the need to like make myself sound more sophisticated and fucking big time when it's like I think that YouTube is big time and I think it's fucking bullshit that we all have to be like Oh, I'd like to be some big Hollywood director in order for someone to take you seriously. Go ahead, watch my talent on my fucking YouTube channel every single day. Like, you don't need to see me in Hollywood to know that I'm good at what I do. Bye! This video is pretty much done at this point. I packed everything beneath my bed. If you have not checked out my podcast, Girl Under You, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, and we have a YouTube channel where we upload the video podcast. I like how I'm saying we as if it's anyone besides fucking me. <laughs> it's over there too if you guys want to go check that out. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You know how it is. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give it a like. If you did like it, comment something down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.